Hello, I'm Carla, this is Liz. Thank you for joining us in today's short practice, a nice warm up of the shoulders. We are beginning in Vajrasana. Have whatever support you usually use for your practice. You may need a set of bricks, definitely some blankets, and you possibly might use your strap. In um, Vajrasana, your knees are together. Your inner line of the foot is touching so that when you sit, each buttock bone is seated on each heel. And don't allow the feet to become like a little bucket for the bum. You want the outer ankles to cut in. If it's absolutely impossible for you to extend the front foot like that, take a few extra blankets so that when you sit, you can let your feet dangle off the edge and the angle won't be as um, strong and intense. In Vajrasana, you're just finding that lift and openness of the chest. Feel here that there's a stretch in the front ankle, the front shin, the knees are in a deep bend. So make sure that your knees feel comfortable. Otherwise, take a little bit of support between the heels and the buttocks. Bring the hands together in the prayer position. We're going to begin the class today with just the three arms to quieten us, to center us and to bring us to the mat. So letting the eyes close. Be with your breath here for a few moments where you make the spine tall, the chest well open, and with each exhalation, just releasing the shoulders, relaxing the skin of the face, muscles of the face. Chest well lifted on an exhalation, drop your head down. Take a moment here to salute the divinity within. On the next breath out, release your hands down onto your lap, lift your head up and open your eyes. Right, we're coming to Virasna. In Virasna, you are seated on the front of the knee like this, but the feet are apart and you're seated in between the two feet. So I'll show you what not to do. You don't take the knee to roll out to the side and the feet to flop out to the sides. Rather, when you come into the pose, you wanna keep that long line of the inner line of the leg. And you may not be able to sit flat, especially at the beginning of your practice. So you might wanna take a brick either on the flat height or a little bit higher. The feet are apart so that the buttock can fit in between the two feet. And if you don't have bricks, these shoulder balance foams are also quite nice. When coming into Virasana, if you do have a big bulky muscular thigh, you might need to turn the thigh out or just flattening the inner thigh to the inside, the outer thigh to the outside, pressing the shins down you come onto your seat. The outer edge of the foot, the small toe side, needs to press down so the outer ankle cuts in. And you want the whole spread of the metatarsals, all the toes on the floor. It is sometimes helpful just to separate the big toe from the index toe. Outer ankles come in. You want that inner heel tall. And again, just feel here what your knees are feeling. Take more support under the buttocks if your knees are taking strain. And from here, we're going to, sitting in Virasana, we're going to come to Parvatasana. So interlace the fingers right to the webbing, lock the elbows, and you're going to stretch the arms over your head. As you stretch the arms over your head, keep the chest lifted, stretch the sides of the body, and each exhalation, soften the throat. Relax the top shoulder. So although the arms come close to the ear, this top shoulder should be a little bit soft. And then release the arms down. You'll now change so that the other index finger is on top. So changing the cross of the fingers, turning the palms, and up we go. Stretching the arms right from the sides of the body, locking the elbows, 
but keeping that throat and the top shoulder region relaxed and quiet. When you've been there for a few breaths, stretching into that zigzag of the fingers, release the hands down, rest the hands on the lap, Relax right from the top shoulder. So if you felt any tension in the neck and shoulder region, take a moment here to release. We're coming to stand in Tadasana. From Virasana to release, you come onto all fours and it is helpful to just extend the legs behind you one at a time to allow the blood to just flow easily and freely again. We're coming now to Tadasana. Tadasana, of course, is our standing pose. Standing. In the middle of your mat, your feet are together. So in Tadasana, you can come and stand here in the middle of the mat. Feet are together. You want the outer thighs cutting back. The outer calves are drawing back and the knees and the thighs are gripped up. As you extend into the fingertips, you want to keep the elbows locked and the arms alert. And as you lift the spine, you open up across the chest. Just be here for a few breaths. Make sure that you don't throw your head back or lean your head forward. So sides of the neck are back and back of the head lines up with your tailbone. Namaskarasana is bringing the hands into the prayer position as we did at the beginning of class. So we're bringing our hands to Namaskarasana in Tadasana. When we come to Pashima Namaskarasana, Pashima means to the back. So when we come to Pashima Namaskarasana, you're going to use your breath. You're going to inhale, swing the arms out into Utita Hastasana on an inhalation. As you exhale, you're going to bring the arms into the back and into the prayer position at the back. Once your hands are at the back, you want to keep this openness across the collarbones and also keep pointing the elbows towards the floor then releasing the arms at your sides in Tadasana. So we'll do a few rounds of that. We'll show. So we'll just show the hands in Pashima Namaskarasana from behind. You're bringing feet together in Tadasana. Stand tall, alert the spine and the limbs. With the hands in Namaskarasana, inhale, stretch them out. Exhale, bring them in. Once you've got them together, you want to keep the palm closed. You want to bring the hands in line with the shoulder blade region, this dorsal area, so that it keeps that focus of shoulder blades in. Liz is doing a wonderful job here. Most people can't get the hands together. You might find that you're there. If like me, I have a shoulder injury at the moment, one side works, the other side is really quite diabolical. But you just keep practicing. And if that doesn't come, you can just simply cross your arms behind your back. So do you want to show the fold of the cross of the arms behind the back? So that is another option. If you're unable to do Pashima Namaskarasana, really nice shoulder work, shoulder opening. Right, we're going to come now to Pajvotanasana. Pajvottanasana is a forward bend. We'll do the first Pajvottanasana with the hands moving towards the floor. If you're unable to reach the floor, you will have a set of bricks on which you can place your hands and that just reaches, uh, makes the reach to the floor a little bit easier. So feet are together, you're coming to Tadasana. From Tadasana, fingertips to the chest. And on an inhalation, step or jump the feet apart. Right. From here, first pose, trikonasana, uh, sorry. So turn this whole right leg out. You might want to take your legs a little bit wider. Turn the feet out to the side. Keep that stretch across the hands, that openness across the collarbones. And the first pose we're doing is trikonasana. On an exhalation, come over the side, coming to your brick. If your brick, if you don't need the brick, you don't have to have the brick for now. We're using the brick to keep this extension. So launch off of that brick and extend your arm up fully. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. You still want to keep that spread and openness across the collarbones and that lift of the chest. So inhale, can you lift your breastbone? Exhale, release the shoulders down the back. And as you exhale, you also want the shoulder blades to come into the body to turn and open this chest some more. When you're ready, pressing into the brick, inhale, come up, turn the feet to face forward. At any point in between poses, if you need to come to Tadasana to rest, you do. 
Also, if it's tiring on your hands and shoulders and you need to place your hands on your hips to rest, then you do. Sometimes the feet come out of alignment. So lining up your feet, the left and the right foot, extend your hands into Utita Hastasana, turn towards the left. So take the legs wide, this outer left foot descends, the whole right leg turns so that you can see she's not only got a spread across the collarbones, but also a lovely openness across the pelvis. Inhale and as you exhale, extend over to the brick, move the root of the left thigh away to get length in the left waist. As you inhale, you lift the breastbone up, but where this left shoulder wants to sneak up to the ear, you want to roll the shoulders away from the ears. You also keep working at turning, taking that right hip back, the left buttock in. Lift and open the chest, strong legs, grip up your thighs. And when you've been in Trikonasana for a few breaths, up you come, turn the feet. And we'll either heel toe in or you can step or jump the feet together, coming back to Tadasana. Right, now we are going to Pajvotanasana. So Pajvotanasana, you want both bricks to the front of your mat and we're taking our hands to the floor. So fingertips to the chest, inhale, step or jump the feet apart. Now, Take your hands onto your hips, especially if you're a beginner. This not only allows your chest to relax a little bit, the shoulders to relax, but it's also going to guide you. So your hip bones in front, Gita calls these your spotlights. They have to turn. So Liz is going to turn to the right. Back foot has to turn in deeply so that that left hip can come forward and the right leg is strong to stabilize you. To find your balance in this pose, imagine you pressing your feet into the mat and ripping the mat apart. Consciously bring that left hip forward and you want to turn from the left hip to the right hip. So feel that your spotlights are facing straight ahead. Now with a strong back leg, strong front leg too, take your hands onto the bricks and the bricks are in line with your ankles. So it's a little bit difficult to jump with the bricks in the way. So here, bring the bricks into alignment. In Pajvotanasana, you're keeping the legs strong. And the action of the legs is that you're drawing the root of the thighs back. Against that stability of drawing the root of the thighs back and strong legs, you want to stabilize the sacrum. So the right hip must lift, the left hip descends. So that sacrum is in a flat position. If you have the flexibility to drop your bricks and at the same time, keep the strong straight alignment of the spine, then absolutely start to drop down. Of course, in the full forward bend, there's a natural roundness to the back, but you don't start bending forward right at the beginning of the pose. The more you descend, the more consciously you must become of the back of the neck becoming long, the breastbone keeps extending forward. You can move your hands towards the floor, complete the pose where you let your head settle down. Here, yes, there's a natural roundness, but you still want to maintain that frontal extension. And you want to try and keep the hips level by keeping that right hip tall. To come up and out of it, you walk your hands back to the halfway position. Again, stabilize the hips, firm up the legs. And with that absolute gripping of the feet into the mat, up you come. Turn the feet and you can step the feet together coming to Tadasana. Gives you a chance to quieten, catch your breath. Also then gives you the opportunity to move your bricks to the other side of the mat. When we're ready, we start in Tadasana. Fingertips to the chest. On an inhalation, use that buoyancy of the inhalation to step or jump the feet apart. Once again, you can take your hands on your hips as a beginner or you can even keep them out to the side in Vimasana. Turn the right foot deeply in, turn the left foot and the whole left leg all the way out. So again, you're stabilizing the feet, you're turning the hips, you're squaring off the hips and the sacrum. Strong legs, be on the outer edge of the back foot. And then when you're ready, inhale. And as you exhale, take your hands to your bricks. Adjust so that the bricks are in position. Adjust so that the hips are level. Be here for a few breaths in this halfway pose where you can just feel the strength in your legs. You can 
find a smoothness in your breath. And as you spend a few breaths in this pose, see how it evolves. Can you possibly come a little bit lower down? When you come lower down, what happened to the back foot, the squareness of the hips? When you come lower down, can you also start to release the back of the neck as you come into your full forward fold? When you are down in your full forward fold, keep the legs strong. And when you've been in the pose for a few breaths or to your capacity, you take your hands back to the halfway position. You extend the breastbone forward once more, spine is long, thighs are alert. And with that pressure of the feet up, you come, turn the feet and step or jump them together. So it is quite surprisingly challenging to come up and down in these poses, especially in the beginning. You do find that your balance could be a little bit off. So if you do need to step the feet together, that is an option, but rather try to come up and out of the pose. Right. We're repeating this pose, um, Pajvotanasa. This time, however, instead of having the hands on bricks, you're going to take your hands behind your back in Pashima Namaskarasana. Before we do, though, if you really have any shoulder injuries, if you are a brand new beginner, you don't want to force it. You don't want to fall over while you've got your hands bound. So absolutely, you can just go to the blocks. All right. If you want to challenge yourself and challenge your balance, but Pashima Namaskarasana, bringing the hands in the preposition behind your back is not an option for you. You measure your strap from inner armpit to inner armpit or slightly wider. And then you're going to place the straps just on the wrist bone or just above the wrist. And by locking the elbows and extending into the hands, you should still get a lovely open chest. And when you've got the hands in this position, so turn, when you've got the hands in this position and you're stretching, the shoulder blades are coming nicely into the body, which is what you do when you place the hands in Pashima Namaskarasana. So those are your options. Right, we will from Tadasana. It is, initially you do take the hands into Pashima Namaskarasana first and then jump, but for beginners that can be a challenge as well. So feel free to bring your fingertips to your chest, inhale, jump the feet apart. Now take the hands behind your back into the prayer position. Once the hands are behind the back, you get that alertness, that reminder for the shoulder blades to come in and broaden across the chest. Turn the feet to the right, turn the hips to the right, now you really have to work your legs strongly and in your own time, come to Pajvotanasana. With the hands positioned behind the back, you can see that roundness is delayed. So you get a lovely extension in the front of the body. If you have your balance, you can drop your chin and look at your back leg. That does sometimes throw your balance off, so do be cautious. And then when you're ready to come up, strong, strong legs, stretch forward to come up, turn the feet. And if you need to rest your hands in between, absolutely do. Otherwise, once you've aligned the feet, turn the right foot deeply in, left foot all the way around, hips turn. Once the hips are squared off, you've got a lovely lift and openness in the chest. Exhale and come forward. In the classic pose, you do inhale and look up first to really get a massive extension of the front body, but that really does throw you off in terms of balance. So, you know, depending on where you are in your practice, you may or may not do that. When you've been down for a few breaths, once again, you stabilize the legs, you lengthen the spine to come up, turn the feet, just relax the hands, step or bring the feet back to Tadasana. Let the shoulders, the elbows, the hands here be relaxed. So in the beginning of a pose, that Tadasana, yes, is alert. Here, just some softness, feeling the sensations of the asana in your practice. We're coming now to almost a completely different um, arm shape. So Garudasana. Garudasana, you tend to close off your chest. But even so, you do still want to feel a little spread in the collarbones, right? So Garudasana. Nice, easy way of practicing Garudasana arms, and it's also a lovely stretch, is to just give yourself a hug. So give yourself a nice big hug. One elbow will be above the other. And then from this hug position, you take the arms into Garudasana. So lift the forearms up, and you want to hook the fingers 
of the one hand into the palm of the other hand. The shoulders are relaxed. Yes, there's a closing of the chest, but try to draw the upper arms back so that the chest is a little bit open. And then just hug yourself again. Now you'll know which arm is on top. So now you're going to hug the other way. Let's turn to the side. You're going to hug the other way. And when you cross your hands, cross the forearms, you want to keep the elbows off the chest. So don't allow the elbows to drop down. You want to keep a softness and a release in the top shoulder. Also, what sometimes happens is the hands come towards the face. And what you want is the arms in a nice 90 degree. So you move the hands away from the face. Keep the elbows lifted. Release and relax. Lovely stretch across the upper back. To do the complete Garudasana for today's practice, we're going to take the support of the wall. Your feet will be a full footstep away from the wall. So be there with your buttocks rested against the wall. And we'll work the legs first. So in Garudasana, if my left arm is stable, my left leg will be stable. My right leg will wrap, my right arm will wrap. The right leg wraps over and you try and get the toes to come around that standing leg like a vine and the right arm wraps under. So in the classic pose, your gaze is towards that inner elbow line. But for now, take your gaze wherever you're comfortable because we're going to come and try and stand in the balanced position. So shifting your chest off the wall, feel you're balanced on your leg. And when you're ready, <laughs> Are you too far from? When you're ready, you'll come away from the wall. You can also just do it straight up from Tadasana, where you've got balance from the beginning and it challenges your balance right from the beginning. We're going to go to Garudasana to the other side now. So release. If you don't need the wall support, you can come away from the wall, but it does give you an opportunity to just hold the pose a little bit longer. So bend the knees, wrap the left leg around the right. The right arm comes up, right arm is up, and the left arm wraps under the right arm. Here again, find your extensions, find the clasps in the pose, and when you're ready, can you come to stand on your own two feet? <laughs> so I find it easier to do it from the wall as a beginner, but sure, once you're adept and you can just wrap and balance, then go for it. When you're ready, release and come out of it. Shame. Liz always does it free and now I'm making her use the wall. <laughs> right. We're coming now to Samastiti again, that soft Tadasana that you have at the back, at the end of class, at the end of a pose, feeling that softness in the chest, softness in the neck and the shoulders. So we've done a lot of work with the shoulders. Just feel the sensation of your body, sensations of these asanas in your body. Right, we're coming now to Setu Bandha. Setu Bandha is usually done with a brick. We are going to do it in two ways today, once with the brick and once without. So initially for Setu Bandha, you have to come to lying down on your back. Your knees are bent. Do you want to come a little bit more onto the mat? Your knees are bent and you're taking the brick, tall brick if possible for you otherwise you can take it down but then you do lose a lot of height and you want the length of this end on the length of your sacrum so the tailbone is halfway on the brick so the tailbone is on the midpoint of the brick and your buttock flesh is a little bit on and a little bit of your sacrum is on. Once you've placed the, leg, the brick in position, you want to bring the legs. You can keep them together if it's within your practice to do so. If it's a challenge for your back to keep the legs together, then by all means, take the feet and the knees slightly apart to um, hip distance apart. Because we're coming to the end of our practice, we're going to keep the feet and the knees hip distance apart. The knees will want to splay out. You keep rolling from the inner groin, the inner knee down to the inner line of the foot. The upper arms, you have to tuck them in. You roll onto the outer upper arm and tuck the upper arm in. Yoga mudra is interlacing. So we're going to do yoga mudra asana here. Interlace the fingers beyond the brick. If you're able to. If you're unable to, you can either hold the sides of your mat or you can practice this with a strap on the wrists. 
and then change the cross of the fingers. So the yoga mudra clasp gives you that um, action of the outer shoulder blades coming in, the outer upper arms rolling in. In the setu bandha position, you're supported. You're getting a nice jalandhara bandha, that chin lock that you get in shoulder balance. So if you do not practice shoulder balance as an inversion, this is a really good alternative. When you're ready to come down, you'll release the interlock of the fingers and you're just going to turn the brick down one notch. And now you'll turn it horizontally so that it supports the hips, both sides, left and right side. And then when you've settled down a bit more, you can either remove the brick completely or drop it down. But each time you're releasing the vertebra from the neck to the tailbone until eventually you're flat on the floor. So the second set to bundle we're going to do, we're not holding it as long because you're not going to have the brick supporting you. If it's within your practice to take your feet and your knees together and it gives you a little bit more grip, then it is easier for some people. Now what you're going to do, lift up as if the brick were underneath you. So you stomp into your feet, you lift up and then see, can you interlace the fingers, turn onto the outer upper arms. Beautiful way of doing this pose. But you can also hold onto the buttocks. So change the interlock of the fingers. Have a stretch there press the feet down you can move your feet closer to your buttocks yes lift up so you want the shin perpendicular to the floor keep the head in the center and then lastly release the hands and hold your bottom obviously you're not holding quite on the back like you would for shoulder balance support but this is also a nice way of doing it can be challenging on the wrists though if you find it catches your back, keep, take your feet hip distance apart. If you find your legs strain to keep the body upright, keep your feet hip distance apart. When you're ready now, you're going to slowly release. Again, extending from the neck to the tailbone. And just with the knees bent, you can let the abdomen quieten. You've already been in that set to bandha shape where you had that rolling of the tricep in. So already here, your chest is in a beautiful open position in preparation for Shavasana. Shavasana, you might need some support. So if you need a blanket for underneath your head and your neck, you can place not underneath the shoulders, only supporting the head and the neck. If your legs are not comfortable lying flat, you're welcome to use a bolster under the knees. Otherwise, you can just take the legs flat and you just get it under your neck. So the blanket supports the head and the neck. The shoulders are free. Again, come to that shape that you had a moment ago where you rolled the arms. You turned onto that outer upper arm so that the chest is open. And the flesh of the buttocks, because you began with bent legs, the flesh of the buttocks should already be down to the heels. But if not, you can simply just adjust it. A little bit of a pelvic tilt or use your hands to adjust it. Once you have settled your body, remember Shavasana is a pose. So you want to make sure that from the nose to the breastbone to your navel is all a straight line. If you have no teacher and you're working online, look down your own body, make sure your body's correctly placed. Both hands are equidistant from the midline, the legs also relax the feet, relax the hands. Relax right from the hips to the toes, right from the shoulders to the fingertips. With the back of the neck long, you want to close your eyes, soften the skin across the eyebrows, the forehead to the temples. Soften the skin from the bridge of the nose across the cheeks to the ears. The mouth also, the lips are not um, squeezed together. The mouth is kind of, the lips are touching almost, but not touching as if there's just softness. So they touch, but it's a barely imperceptible touch. The mouth is completely soft and released. The cheeks muscles of the face completely let go soft inhalations soft exhalations here 
just with each exhalation, surrendering completely into this quiet Shavasana state. And hold Shavasana for as long as you have time for. But as this is a shorter practice, we'll cut it short. Yeah. Start to let your breath begin to become deeper. Feel those inhalations, feeding every cell of the body with this vital pranic energy. When you feel like your eyes are ready to open and you Hand of every surface somewhat. Bring your hands onto your abdomen. Connect with your breath. With the next breath in, stretch your arms over your head. Give your body a long, deep stretch. You can yawn or sigh the breath out. Bending your knees. Roll onto your right-hand side. You'll use your right arm to cradle your head. Let the left side of the body just hold you in this quiet Shavasana state. Don't be hasty in coming out of your practice. When you feel ready, you're going to press your left hand into the floor. The head comes up last. You're going to lift yourself up in a good position. Once you are seated, sit up tall. Bring your hands together in the prayer position. With the eyes closed. Come back to the breath. Come back to your body. Check in with how you're feeling. And the next breath in, let the eyes gently flutter open and focus. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Carla. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.